Okay, so let's go ahead and do number one. It says the following shows the number of yards a field goal was made for a sample of NFL games. So we have all of this data here and we have to answer these questions. So part A, what is the class width of the frequency distribution if you are to use six classes? So A, I'll do it up here. So the formula for the class width is the following. So class width, so this is going to be the max, which is the biggest number, minus the min, which is the smallest number, and then you always divide by the number of classes. So number of classes, always, every single time. The really nice thing is everything here is in order for us. So the maximum is over here, it's 54. Minus the min, which is the smallest number, so 22. Then all divided by the number of classes, which they give us, it's right here, it's 6. Well, that's pretty cool that I can write on this. I didn't even know that. <laughs> that's great. All right, so this is equal to um, 32 over 6. And if you put this in your calculator, you'll get 5.3 with a bar. Okay, so again, it's the biggest number, which is 54, minus the smallest number, which is uh, 22. Then you always divide by the number of classes, and they'll always give you that. All right, here's the tricky part. You always have to round up. So we go up to six. You want to round up to the same number of decimal places as the data. So we have whole numbers, so you round up to a whole number. Now, if it was like five, which it won't be, you would still round to six, okay? So it's always, always round up, no matter what. I know it feels weird. You know, if it's 5.3, you're supposed to round down, but no, no, this is a special rule just for the class width. Okay, part B, form the frequency table. So let's go ahead and do that, so B. So the first step in forming the frequency table is to write down the smallest number. So, oh, let me go ahead and make the table first. Go ahead and like, you know, put like a little heading like we have here, so classes and frequency. And so the first thing you wanna do is write down the smallest number. So the smallest number in this case is 22. And then you want to add the class width and you want to work down, okay? So just add the number and go down. So 22 plus six is 28, plus six is 34, plus six is 40, plus six is uh, 46. And then plus six more will give us 52. Let's just check that. We wrote down the smallest number. We added six, we added six, we added six, we added six, we added six. We have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. And so we stop here because we only want six classes, right? Really easy to keep going. So we stop because we have six. Then we put dashes. Okay. To get the number that goes here, what you do is you look at this one and you ask yourself, what is the number that comes right before 28 and is a whole number? So 27, okay? And then you just um, add the class width and work down again. So 27 plus six is 33, plus six is 39, plus six is 45, plus six is 51, plus six is 57, good stuff. All right, just a quick recap. You write down the smallest number, add the class width work down, put dashes, and then to get this number that's here, you look at the 28 and you ask, what's the number right before 28? That's also a whole number, 27. And then to get the rest, you add the class width and work down. For the frequencies, all we have to do is count all the numbers between 22 and 27, including those. So let's see, one, two, there's only two this time, cool. 28 to 33, 1, 2, 3, 34 to 39, 1, 2, 3, 4, 40 to 45, 1, 2, 3, 4, 46 to 51 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, going kind of fast, just counting, 52 to 57 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay, I went fast, so let's see if I messed up. How many numbers are there? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. 
So if you multiply 6 times 4, you get 24. So there's 24 numbers. Just always count across and count up and down and multiply, and that'll give you the total. And the trick is, these should add up to 24. Let's see, 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4 is 9, plus 4 is 13, plus 5 is 18, plus 6 is 24. Yep. So this is 100% correct, right? Nice way to check your answers. You count these numbers, and then you just add these up, and you should get the same amount. All right, now we have to perform the frequency uh, histogram. That's part C. This part's a little bit difficult. Well, it's just a little bit subtle. So the first thing we're going to need is the boundaries. We just need the first lower class boundary. So what you do is you take these two numbers and you add them up and divide by two, okay, like this, always. So take these two numbers, add them up and divide by two, and that's going to give you 27.5. So this is the second... Um, class boundary. We want the first one. So to find the first class boundary, what you do is you take this number and you subtract the class width, always. So in this case it's minus 6, so it's 21.5. So this is the number we want, okay? This is the, the, the class boundary, it's the first one. Okay, class boundary. All right, again, you take these, add them up, divide by 2, and then subtract the class width. All right, well, now we're ready to go. We're ready to do part C. So let's do it. So I'm going to go to StatCrunch, which is here, and now we're going to type in all of the numbers. So 22, be really careful typing in the numbers, it's really easy to mess up. 25, 28, 30, 31, 34, 35, 36, 38, 40, 41, 42, 43, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, really easy to mess up, 52, 52, 53, 53, 54, 54. So at least I know that I entered 24 numbers. Let me just double check though, because it's really easy to mess up. 22, 25, 28, 30, 31, 34, 35, 36, 38, 40, 41, 42, 43, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, two 52s, 53, a 53, oh, look right there, there should be, that should be a 53, you see that, 53, 53, 54, 54, okay, so very easy to mess up as you see, so 52, 52, 53, 53, 54, 54, all right, so now that we've done that, you go to graph, Histogram, select a variable one, and it says bins right here, bins. So you want to start at this number here. So remember, you added these up, divided by two, subtract the class width. That's how you get that number, always, okay, always. That's the hardest part, I think, of the whole problem, maybe. I mean, it's just a little bit weird. And then, and then the width, that was six, right? So six, and then there's some other stuff here. You can just leave it alone. That's pretty much all you enter, okay? So just pick var one. Uh, start at this number here, enter the width, click Compute, and there it is. So now the challenging part is drawing this. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to come down here, and this was part C, I believe. So I'm going to go ahead and put um, C here. So I guess what we can do is we can just like label um, these numbers here. These are the boundaries. So I'm going to do that here. So uh, 21.5. I'll try to do a decent job. You just have to do a rough sketch. 27.5, uh, 33.5, uh, 39.5, 45.5, uh, 51.5, and then 57.5. All right, and then we'll just do like a really rough sketch. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. If you have a ruler, that's great. If not, um, that's, that's fine. I don't have a ruler because I'm using a um, uh, some kind of writing pad, so... It's all freehand, <laughs> so it's kind of fun. All right, here we go. Oh, this is cool. It's coming. It's turning out pretty good. Better than expected. I'm I'm impressed with my with my graph. Look at that. That's a work of beauty. Uh, and then I guess we can connect the lines down here. All right, look at that. And um, you see these numbers here, the one, two, three. Those are the counts. So right, those are the frequencies. So I'm gonna put a two here. Maybe I'll, let me use a line here. Let me draw a line. See if I can do something like this. So, 
that's pretty good, right? So yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm going to put a two here and a three here and a four here, little tick marks like this. It's pretty good. And then uh, this one's five. And the last one is a six, I believe. So not too bad, right? Not too bad. This is, that's a rough sketch of our histogram. So it's not perfect, right? But uh, I mean, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right. Is there another question? I think there is. And I think the last part's really easy. In fact, I'll do it up here. So I'm going to call it D. D will be up here. And it says, what is the basic distribution shape? Uniform, bell, left, or right skewed? Okay. So let me just come down here, actually, and talk about that br briefly. So what is uniform? Uniform. Uniform, uh, I wanted to say means uniform, but if you don't know what that means, that doesn't help, right? So <laughs> uniform is like this. So it just doesn't change, you know, roughly uniform. So it can have some imperfections, but if it if it doesn't change like this, if it's constant, it's uniform. This is not uniform. Uh, Bell-shaped is bell-shaped, so it looks something like this. You know, even if it's just roughly bell-shaped, you would put bell-shaped. So this is not bell-shaped. And then this is left-skewed. So the answer is left-skewed. So left skewed, the way I remember it is, this is called the tail. The skinny part is called the tail. So if it's tail to the left, skewed left, right? The tail is to the left, so it's skewed left. If it looks like this, okay, this is this is skewed right. So it's wherever the tail is. So tail to the left, skewed left, tail to the right, skewed right. So a lot of information in this video, and I, I can see the time here. It's 11, over 11 minutes. Um, I tried to do it as fast as I could. Hopefully this video uh, has been helpful to you. It's not hard. It just takes it just takes a little bit of time. So good luck.